Now, what I think they did a really good job was starting it off with three separate characters in three separate regions to build exposition for each of the things that are happening in this post-apocalyptic world. For me, it felt like a select your player kind of part of mm, the video game. Yeah. Who would you like to start as? Do you find you fit more into your Maximus? Are you more like your Lucy? Mm. Are you... You ran out of Fs to give and so you're the ghoul. So it was kind of really nice to have that perspective going into it. And it did a really good job establishing what Fallout is all about. Welcome back to the Wasteland. This is the Break Room After Show. Yeah. Whoa, oh, look at those graphics. Oh, the Fallout one, that's cool. Ooh. That's right, today we're talking about Amazon Prime's newest show, Fallout. Joining me today, a couple of the most hardcore gamers I know. We've got Mod Garrett. What's up, yeah, hardcore gamers. Hey, baby, Jackie Jing is here. I know, it was like hardcore, okay. I think so. Take well, I'm take queuing it. you guys up because okay. someone who has not played the Fallout games for, for offering that kind of unique perspective, we have Zach Huddleston. That's right, the ghoul of the break room. That's right, he's back. What's up, this nose is a prosthetic. <laughs> you know what, Zach, what would we each be? What do we think? Do oh, you think you'd be ghoul? I, aspirational ghoul. I would love to be a ghoul. What do we think? I am, I am one of the skeletons where you open the stall door and he's just like on the <laughs> toilet. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I'd be a fiend because they eat people. Oh. Ooh. Um. Actually, Maud has a doppelganger in the show. Oh, the pretty yeah. little No, she, her teeth are too perfect. I you guys look, I saw really? her in real life I and I literally, you're both Maud? stunning. I'll but take I it. literally thought it was you at first. And oh, then, I'll need to be Yeah, standing. she's stunning. She's gorgeous. But yeah, she's Maud's do doppelganger. I'm pregnant. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Mod's pregnant. Congratulations. Baby. So here's what we're going to do. I'm doing my part. That's right. Repopulation. I feel like Mod should have worn an eye patch. I, uh -huh. this. We that have. Been... Uh, you know what? Stand by. We don't do that. Stand, no, Twitch? don't make her wear an eye patch. No. Her, 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 okay. her, her, her periphery, everything. Will, yeah. It's, it's okay. Jackie so, said you should go do this thing. No, and then when I went right, to go do right. it, she was like, don't you dare. Listen, she I didn't think you would. I'm, I'm waiting <laughs> for the cosplay mod. That's all I'm going to say. I'm waiting for the cosplay. Oh, yeah. She's got a great Halloween costume for next year, should she choose. Yeah, great. Perfect. Perfect. Um, You got a few months to get knocked up. Here we go. Oh, my God. Is that inappropriate? Is that? Here's how this is gonna work. <laughs> Not the fingers crossed spot at the end. Sorry, moving on, hello. Here's how this is gonna work. Similar to our movie reviews, we're gonna kind of tackle <laughs> categories and what we thought about them. At the end, maybe we'll give a little Wasteland score, but who knows? Score like singing? Yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're all gonna sing some I Spin Doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but okay. Um, um, style. Okay, let's get into it. Okay. I want to start with the story because it's a new story from Fallout. Uh, uh, executive producer, showrunners, Lisa Joy, Jonah Nolan, a couple of uh, the, a married couple who worked on Westworld together. Jonah Nolan, obviously the brother of Christopher Nolan, though Jonathan Nolan, Jonah Nolan has an American accent. Chris Nolan, British they're, accent. They're both separated uh, at birth, or they parent trapped. No, I don't know. They were both raised in both England and America, and one of them chose one. One, and one of them, them thinks that British accent sounds cooler. <laughs> that would be neat. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's funny. There you go. Okay, so it's a it's an original story. You have some folks from Bethesda, including Todd Howard, on board as executive producers to kind of guide the storytelling here. What did we think? A new story from Fallout. It's been a long time. Fallout seventy six came out what in twenty. 17, something around there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, someone in the chat help us. Yeah. So what, what do we think of the overall story? Who do you uh, want to go first? Uh, let's start with Zach, because okay, he, he has not played yeah. these games before. Well, I, I think a couple things we're going to keep coming back to is video game adaptation. Yep. yep. And, and for me, again, not having played the games, this was less of an adaptation and more just me kind of coming out of story. And I was talking to John a little bit about this earlier in the office. We've seen a lot of like post-apocalyptic kind of dark future content in That's our lives. That's we're heading there. Oh God, it's really fast. Well, some would argue living it, but um, I think like I really enjoyed this. I think especially since this was binge dropped, I appreciated the humor, the lightness with which they often dealt with extremely dark topics. Mm -hmm. uh, it made it easier to consume eight hours of this over the course of a weekend, then if if this had been The Last of Us, a show I loved, 
but had a very different tone. Mm-hmm. I could not have consumed eight hours of that in one weekend mm-hmm. and felt okay about myself. I will <laughs> oh say, I think the biggest question to ask as well, not only is the story good, but should we have released every single, should mm. they have released every single episode in a binge well, format? You or know should what? they have stagnated it over uh, the course of the weeks? I um, love that. Let, should we, do you want to talk about that now? I, yes. Yeah, okay. sorry. Hi, Jack. So, wait, do we all like the show? Should we like... Sure, or should we go You want to do general that thoughts? Later? Man, yeah, I'm not thoughts. I'm not producing the shit out of this show right now. Okay. Let's do general okay. thoughts. So Zach gave it the I give it a big old We're doing we're doing a Vop Boy, up. we're doing okay. an Okie Dokie, which is like a mid. <laughs> yeah. And, and we're doing a wasted. Bow, bow. Wasted, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um I I am a part of the Vault Boy Hell campaign. Yeah. Um, I thought that it paid homage to the video game beautifully. I, I loved all of the Easter eggs. I love seeing the vault dwellers brought to life in this way. The ghouls, um, the brotherhood. I, I thought the brotherhood was absolutely really frightening. Um, and I loved the three main characters. I love Lucy. I love Max. Um, Walton Goggins, though, I mean, we were talking about him before we jumped into the show, and I just, brilliant. His one-liners, yes. like, I, there's so many good ones. My favorite one, though, is when um, he's looking at Lucy, and she's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm you, honey. Just give yep. it a few years. And I literally <laughs> just, just got chill. And, and speaking of accents, we see in the flashbacks, he does not have a super cowboy yep, accent. Yep, yep. As a ghoul, he's gone full Clint Eastwood. Wouldn't you? I agree. Yeah. You know, you play a yeah. cowboy your whole career. You're like, fuck it. When's the when's the most appropriate <laughs> time for me yeah. to be a cowboy? And he's also been in the ground for like 217 yeah. years. Yep. So, and yeah. he gets brought out for sort of like mercenary missions, then put back in the ground. Apparently, that's yeah. a little and they were cutting off his limbs yeah. while he was in the Taking ground or whatever. He's, he's seen yeah. some stuff. Yeah, he's seen some stuff. I would say. Um, but to wrap it up, yeah, I, I was a huge fan. Like, I, I really, really loved it. And I thought the acting was superb. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just, like, thought the performances were so convincing and heartfelt, yet extremely comedic at times. Um, and I loved that that mix-up. Because, like you said, like, The Last of Us is so great, but um, I don't think I could have watched that in, in one sitting. Like, The Last of Us is so heavy. You, know? you can only so, handle that much heartbreak and, yeah, like, devastation yeah. at once. Totally. Yeah. And, and The Last of Us is a really unique case because because this show is so much more expansive. It's most. It's basically an ensemble cast. You've got your kind of leads here and there, but The Last of Us is so intimate. It's two people for the most part, and like one faction. You have the Fireflies um, telling one sort of like A to Z story, where this is like, you know, a lot more broad. I remember like, you know, well, I think it was watching episode three or four, and it's like, oh yeah, the head, the, Michael Emerson's head is still a MacGuffin, like this yeah. far into the show, whereas I sort of thought that would get resolved relatively quickly, <laughs> but it's just being footballed around. Um, I would, I'm also a Vault Boy thumbs up guy. Um, I thought the series was really fun. Someone who has played a lot of the video games, the like backfilling of details that they gave, the sort of origin of the Vault Boy, how, you know, like, how dog meat was made yeah. by the Enclave, things like that was, like, just meat. a nice, it's it's a really good, hey, they added to this world without taking away from it. They gave fans exactly probably what they would be wanting, and it was super welcoming to new folks as well. Um, also, I saw John at an event, and I, I told John, I was like, dude, like, I think it's better than the boys. And he was like, no way. No way. And then we were just over there, and he was like, because, you know, and we'll get into this in a second. I think I agree. No, I think so too. We'll get into this in a second, because, like, historically, video game adaptations have been like, well, we'll find out. Yeah. Um, and I think this one did a really good job. Yeah. Did you, do you want to thumbs up this, My this guy? Yeah. There you go. Yay. Four. Oh, guys, it's 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 actually blowing up bigger than my thumb. We got to run. <laughs> oh, run. Wait, run. is it your thumb oh, or mine? God. That's so that sad. Good. So oh, I will say, the, if The Last That's of Us good. was like really going by the game, almost play by yeah. play, mm-hmm. uh, this has done a very different job. It's not just the one game. This is covering Fallout, Fallout 2, 3, 4, 76, New Vegas, there's a lot to pull from. Now, what I think they did a really good job was starting it off with three separate characters in three separate regions to build exposition for each of the things that are happening in this post-apocalyptic world. You have the vault dwellers and you understand that sort of like, it's very pristine, it's sort of like encapsulated in the 1950s, they've got a strict protocol there, um, and it kind of sets up what the vaults are about. And then it goes into the enclave, um, you see sort of like how they're trained, what they do with, the dogs, which don't 
Don't ever yeah, hurt don't. a dog oh in a show. I will deduct a point without. Well, I did. I did love that they did not show on screen the euthanizing dogs. They're fine showing. What are you all talking manner. about? They threw it, they in, threw the it in the furnace. Okay. <laughs> but but I mean, you don't see. I don't know. They didn't. It could have been so much more graphic with a dog versus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or even. It could be more. Dude. Zach's like, I don't know. Wait, I, was this what? bad that no, I keep doing this? I'm just saying, a show that I or or when uh, Doug Meat gets shot before he gets healed yeah. up, they don't show him getting shot. You kind of hear it off screen, even though they're willing to show would, like okay, human gonna... limbs get ripped. No, I mean the in the in the same scene, basically when uh, what's his face is getting his leg meat ground. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, it was like way yes. worse. Um, I would rather see seventeen heads blown off than a dog be harmed. <laughs> you know? And yeah, a furnace, true. no less. Yeah. And they were. Oh, yeah, I know. Dude, we show but small. then you also saw um, what sort of like the wasteland was all about as well. So you had like above the surface, uh, underneath, and you had sort of like the brotherhood as well. So you, you kind of were able to like it for me it felt like a select your player kind of part of mm, the video game. Yeah. Who would you like to start as? Do you find you fit more into your Maximus? Are you more like your Lucy? Mm. Are you? We ran out of Fs to give, and so you're the ghoul. So it was kind of really nice to have that perspective going into it. And it did a really good job establishing what Fallout is all about, which I, I think is it. quite a hard thing to do from a single lens. So to split it up like that, really, really clever. Mm -hmm. By the end of it, though, it didn't uh, avoid just talking about overall impressions. It didn't mm -hmm. stick the landing with a couple of stories. It didn't mm -hmm. tighten it up in a nice little bottom. I could agree with that. Yeah, it left yeah. a little bit I could sloppy. agree with We're that. We're going to talk about some season yeah. two stuff I definitely want to hash that out, though, because yeah. I do plot think, holes. I think it was like genius for like the first few episodes. And then I did kind of catch myself in the last one being like, wait, Hold on. So I do, we, yeah. we can dive into that later. But. I will say though, as a video game fan, I am just blown away. I'm in absolute awe of how they have taken things from the video game and built it into this world. Mm -hmm. They have done such a good job. Some of them were quite obvious, some of them not at all. It was super subtle, but it really encapsulated the vibe and what Fallout is. Mm -hmm. And it felt like you're in the video game and they did a really good job of that. So yeah. No, you're totally right. It was like from the jump, I think this is maybe episode two, but like from the jump, where Maximus pulls the guy off of the person he's beating up and the guy's like, well, he was fucking my chickens. It's like <laughs> yeah. such a perfect, like, this is the wasteland. <laughs> Here's exactly how this is going to go. The, the, every, the bad people are gray. Nothing really quite works. But I, I agree. I had some friends over watching it uh, with me and they were sort of like, in the next Fallout game, it would be so fun to be able to sort of similar to like how Skyrim mods let you, allow you to like start in different places. It'd be mm -hmm. so fun to do a goal playthrough. It'd be so fun yes, to do this. 100%. That, the, thing. the other part that I love is they filled in a lot of, or they, they redefined or maybe like better defined vault dwellers because in the games, a lot of times you you're playing as a vault dweller. And so there's like a line that Lucy was like, you know, treat others how you want to be treated or whatever. And you're just like, you're such a fucking vault dweller. And I just <laughs> love that. Oh my God. The whole scene with the old lady when yes. she's just like, fucking she's like, go back to dweller. your fucking vault <laughs> with Walton Goggins. And then she's like, excuse me, sir. But I think everyone here feels like the actions you've taken have been offensive. <laughs> like it was like, I loved Ella Purnell. I have an she's Easter great. egg behind that. Ooh. Yeah. Actually, so when she's, um, you know, submitting herself to be married off and she's stipulating her uh, skill sets, yeah. that is how you distribute points in the game. And the things that she said she specialized in was speech. Specialized. Uh, oh, because Spe she's special. specialized. No, you know, when you're she's selecting your beautiful. stats in Fallout, it's like S P E C A I A L or whatever. There you go. Oh, I, I love think that. you just spelled spatial, but. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, good. I, yep. Um, but it was speech, um, repair, and I think research. I can't remember what the third one was, but they built that into her character style. So when she gets out, she uses speech first and foremost. She tries to talk her way out of situations. Mm -hmm. She's able to kind of like tinker and repair. So I mm -hmm. kind of love that they distributed stat points and love that was it. the character. So it makes me wonder sort of like how the other two distributed their skill sets because I don't think Maximus did a very good job. <laughs> no, full strength, zero charisma. Yep. Yeah. Zero full intelligence. Strength, <laughs> just full. like oh my God. Which is appropriate for <laughs> yeah, his character. Brotherhood of Steel, absolutely. Yeah. He's got high stamina, but like he he 
does. I don't actually think he put enough stat points in strength because he couldn't carry much, and he got his. What is it? You get your. He did okay in that. He did. He did okay in that fight where they they all came from. I was a little worried though. But when he went up against like the people trying to steal his uh, armor, his power That's armor. That's true. And I then right like, afterward, yeah, his squire is like lifted down oh by the shoulders. So yeah, funny. I'm like, ugh. I I one thing I do want to talk about with the three characters that I loved. Um, you kept on saying that the ghoul is like Clint Eastwood, and it's definitely the good, the bad, and the ugly yes. here being reflected. Oh, and um, I mean, like obviously we have Lucy who's good. We have Max who's like, you're. Oh, I honestly the um when they're in the medical tent, that scene gave me chills. Mm -hmm. When um, the other soldier was like, yeah, I told them uh, you wouldn't hurt a fly. And later it's revealed that yeah. they did that to themselves. But yeah. I was like, is Max like terrible? No. Well, also, you know? I, I think, and, and you know, we can just touch briefly on some of like the online discourse and, and reaction to the show. And I think like the Maximus character and that actor maybe has been one of the few kind of like not controversial, but like sticking points for some audience members. Uh, uh, uh. Because I think that is like, that character is meant to be complicated, ambiguous. We don't know if they put the razor blade in the boot mm. till the end of the series. Right, yeah. right, we right. don't know, like, the, the character does all kinds of things in the he name lets of- his pa He lets his knight yes. run alive. Like, I was and, like, and okay, that guy was brutal. I mean, like, the guy was really not kind and, like, super vicious. I wanted him to but stim back the out Michael, wide. <laughs> Michael, oh my God, Rappaport, that Michael I Rappaport in a scene stealing uh, uh, role. Yeah, but, but I mean, he does but, yeah. all kinds of things. Like, he lies uh, to Lucy for yeah. multiple episodes yeah. about who he is. He does all kinds he of things. He takes that villages or that, remember Yes, the, he's the, willing to take their nuclear reactor yeah. core or whatever, mm -hmm. the, the fusion thing, right? I would thing, be, right? too, if I was playing uh, the game. Let me he, tell you, it's the wasteland. He, 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 <laughs> <laughs> chaotic evil in games. Yes. These two are chaotic evil. No, no, actually, surprisingly so. If I'm disappointing people in a video game, yeah. I cannot handle the consequences of that. I Whoa. always play good. Oh, really? If I'm playing a tabletop game, you best uh, believe I'm bringing mm. my chaotic foot forward. Okay. Okay. We should do some break room DMD. <laughs> Hell oh my yes. God. Yes. Um, but, okay. Well, well that is to say, Jackie, I love Sorry. your good, bad, and ugly yeah. metaphor, right? Yeah. Whereas, like, Lucy and the ghoul are like so clearly defined opposite ends of a spectrum, and they're like hard on those opposite ends of the spectrum. Oh, right? yeah. Total nihilism that, like, we then see at the end actually there's something a little under that nihilism for the ghoul, right? Mm -hmm. He's not just to like fuck the world, he, he does have something he still cares about a little bit. And Lucy is so like, good above all. Though actually then she shades a little bit mm -hmm. more towards so, the middle by the end. So I think once you decapitate a head off a corpse, like you, you, you passed the point and you just- I mean, and, and you saw cheerful. it in her head too, right? <laughs> she, she was, was so like, cheerful. fuck like, it, yeah, okie okay. dokie. Yeah. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out, there was an exceptional monologue um, from the doctor or I forget, he's from the Enclave. Is his name Philzig? I think I have him, Wilzig, Wilzig. And he's talking to Lucy and he's like, just go back to the vaults. He's like, or you're going to, and he does that whole cockroach analogy and he's like, or you'll learn to adapt and be an entirely different animal that you don't even recognize. I mean, and and, and that there monologue, was a lot of that foreshadowing. Yeah, even great. when she meets, um, again, I can't remember his name, but Michael Emerson's character. That's is that Wilson? Wilson. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Wilson, yeah. Because yeah. yes, yes, yes. he says that a couple of times. He's yeah. like, I don't think you're willing to do he, what you have to do. He's one of the only people yeah. that knows what life is like in the vaults on the surface. Right. And so he knows what she is at her core. And he's like, you're not ready for this. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we, we, I'm assuming we put a bow on the screenwriting a little bit because we moved on to acting. I do want to talk to you guys about some of the kind of like tertiary people. You know, you've got Moldover, mm. you've got Norm, uh, Charlie, I think is the cousin's name. Um, Chet. 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 <laughs> Cousin line was so. Oh my! Oh, from the again, see. again. This is the first ten this minutes is the of the fun show, writing. Yeah. She's like, I'm just tired of doing cousin stuff, and I was like, What? <laughs> You're tired of what? Oh, okay. You but really were doing the reality. Stuff. I genuinely. Can, yeah. can we get into it real quick? Does that mean over the pants? What do you think? Oh my no, gosh! I think stop. that's. I we're think that's for everything. That. If I may, she jumped that Raider's bone so fast, knowing it was her duty. She knew. I mean, she knew what that she was one of my favorite parts of the pilot too. Is when he takes all his clothes off, and you're like, Oh yeah, cool. A disgusting, this guy's a raider, piece of shit rape scene. And then she's like, let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Well, you know, I want to ask y'all, because um, I've watched this with a couple people, and 
did you instantly know at the wedding that they were raiders or did with it get you? the scars and the people are eating weird some things of my, off of Some of my friends yeah. did not know and I was like, oh dude, as soon as, as one of them went like this, on the other person, I think it's Mod's doppelganger's yes. plate. I was like, these people. Well, ain't and they did a nice job. I will say, like, this show did a great job of like playing with tone. There was a lot of horror mm. in this show mm -hmm. mixed with other tones, but like that slow creeping dread as you're beginning to realize these people are not who they say they yes. are. Even right? from the shot of them when the vault door opens, it's like all silhouette, all from behind. You yeah. don't really get to see them. Camera's moving back. It feels like you're in a horror movie. And then when they're at the dinner and she says that iconic line that people are saying of like, what's your sperm count? <laughs> don't you think your vault doctor has all of the you know measurements for you? Is like another thing that well, was like, oh yeah, he doesn't have a vault doctor. He's a raider. Not even that. If you go back and watch that scene, the body language is 100%. different. They've yeah. got greasy hair, they're unkept. Everyone else is so pristine, and next to them, like they've got dirty suits all over mm -hmm. them. So it was like, I thought it was quite obvious. It was just yeah. a when, not if. Happened. I loved it though, because you, like you said, it had this horror element, right? Like you're like something. What did I say about that word? Bad. Oh. Horror, Thank horror. You. you can say it. I'm a bad enunciator. There was also no, but it's a true. horror. Element. After Mom pointed it out to me, <laughs> Americans say horror, horror in a terrible way. Moving on. Um, but yeah, that, that scene was brilliant. That was probably one of my, that was like a selling point for me on the show. She comes out in that wedding dress with like the blood all over and she's got yes. like the ammo and really good. the pickle juice death. Oh, like so all good. the fork. Like, I'm sorry, I, that <laughs> scene fork. hit for to me. Point at Maude. Yeah, I was like, Maude, I'm it sorry. It was a terrible day. Maude, I, will, I will never But the glass eye looks really good, good Maude. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, speaking of whores. Uh, uh, what in that? Speaking of whores, Kyle MacLachlan plays um, the overseer. McLean? Yeah. How was that episode. a segue? That yeah, I didn't get that. Uh, his actions toward the end of the show are kind of son of a bitchy. You know what I mean? Okay. Or, that was uh, such a stretch. That was a stretch, but we'll we'll let but it. That we'll pop. Segue. Thank you. Someone put it in the chat. Yes. Um, Kyle MacLachlan. Uh, I Brilliant, thought, love Very him. fun irony that he gets to meet his hero, Cooper, um, with the Twin Peaks connection of it all. But what do we think of his performance? Stand up. Love I it. love Kyle. Yeah. He's yeah. great yeah. in everything. Well, especially, he, he is so good at portraying that kind of like moral simplicity, that fresh mm -hmm. face, like, gee whiz, kind of a thing that you don't expect right. him to be more complicated than that. So it is kind of a surprise reveal at the end. Even though they foreshadow that multiple times, Moldover, the for a second we meet her, says to Lucy something like, you don't really know you, who your dad so is or something, right? Big plot hole that you kind of brought up earlier. Moldover comes out. How does Hank not know? It's, yes, so that, 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 that was that really did, bumping me is because she really, shows up and he does not recognize her. Later on in that episode, he says, I think I know who you yeah. are. So there's like- I, but then the flashback, she looked identical. I know, well, that's- Well, but no, we don't know that he met her <laughs> I in know, the past. but it's We know Cooper of, met her, but we don't know that he They worked in the same building, did they not? And, not? and Hank, you know, went and did what he did at Shady Sands. I feel like it's very, listen, I get it. You could be like, oh, well, they somehow never cross paths. It just kind of, it just kind of like didn't point. hit. For she should have put on I'm a just wig. Out what no, it wasn't bummer because when we were writing that, <laughs> yeah, no, like, or, or do I something, know wings in the post something, or wear a mask <laughs> or mean, something. Yeah. But I guess a vault. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just or, felt like it could have been hidden a little bit better. I think he should have seen her and then ran like the coward that he is and abandoned Lucy. <gasps> maybe. But oh she's still my god. Moving. Can you also just kind of give a little bit of like? You're not expecting this person to be someone from your past. You think it's just the overseer from the vault next to you. It's been X, you know, almost Maybe decades a since you've seen this person. Um, you know, though it's also know, you're right. It, it, it is a little sus. I, I think holy. just to point out, like once we learned, we forgave that, it. I yeah. gave forgave it. I was like, eh, well, I was like, like I was writing role. the episode one breakdown script, and I uh, I was pitching in, and I was like. Okay, how does this all piece together? Because if she knows that Lucy looks just like her mother, and Kyle McLaughlin says that to her earlier, but he doesn't recognize... You're yeah. right. There was like a lot of spinning wheels that just didn't quite yeah. add up. Yeah, I feel like that could have been a little well, bit better. And oh. hold on, she had her um, the mum's pit boy mm -hmm. as well. So it's yeah, like, it there's... sounds like the mum ran off to be with Moldova. I thought so yeah, too. It does seem like I, I agree on McLean wasn't doing his due diligence in many ways there. Well, also even, so she takes uh, Hank because he will give her the code when they eventually, when the fission 
arrives via the head of uh, Wibzig or whatever, right? Like, why not also take Lucy knowing you might need some leverage over Hank to get the card? Well, she gave the, she gave the option in the first episode. I don't know. You're right. Mm. We should move so, on. I'm yes. going to tell you right now, the more we talk about this, the more we're going to find little things. No, little yeah. things, yeah. And, and it is like, think about it. It's, it's, it's such an incredibly it. complex show. Yeah. They not only have to do world building you have to do like three different world buildings, right? Yes. In one show. Yeah. So it's. it's I forgave it. I forgave yes. it. I just was like, I think that was one thing. At the, it, like Maude brought up at the end, there were some things where I was like, okay, this all didn't quite add up for me, you know? Which is like, hey, you put together a beautiful show. I enjoyed it. I watched, I've, I'm like into my second rewatch already, you know? So it's like, I ain't complaining, yeah. you know? But it's like, okay. Hey. Did you enjoy the... That happened just when your email notification... Hey! Hey! And yeah. you know what? I'm about to talk about what I just got an email oh, about. Okay. Hey, hey! Did you enjoy the old-timey pastiche of Fallout? Well, travel back in time to 1997 with uh, the Break Room team on Wednesday. I'm not talking about the X-Men. I know. I'm talking about NerdRiot.shop. That's right. Oh, Wednesday yeah. is finally the day the Break Room merch drops. Stay tuned. We've got a lot of very cool X-Men inspired designs right now. Uh, we can show some of those on the thing. Show some of those. Oh! Oh, there's Scott Summers. Da, 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 da. There's uh, Storm. Da, 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 da. I stole that shirt off the screen. Da, 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 da. There's Xavier. We've got a Xavier. dope Gambit design that's oh, on the site like, now, Gambit? too. Uh, we <laughs> just don't have a graphic for it. Jackie Check hasn't out. seen episode five yet. Oh, I've, I've already heard. I've already heard some very disheartening news. Yeah. I got spoiled. But Gambit with the mullet and the crop top Here, in episode you one. I you were sitting next to me. I was having. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. having a, a very, very real reaction to that. He was next to me. I was like, Gambit. Is this big enough? Here's our Gambit shirt. Oh my God, I want. I want. Is it now. tie dye too? Uh, this is just a shirt. I think you oh, get okay. it on a normal just shirt. But Gambit is so AJ, AJ Locasio is that the Gambit yes. voice actor? Yes. He's also a fan, fan. fan of New Rock Stars. Hey, hey. hey. You did a great job. You're great. He He's great. Um, uh, so hey. Come back to us on Wednesday, grab some Break Room merch. You're gonna to wanna to watch the teaser video that we put together. Um, Eric Voss is gonna be in town next week, which is very Aww. exciting. He'll be on the show. Uh, we're doing a big blowout for merch. I'm very excited. You guys finally get to get some of this stuff in your hands. Cool. cool. Let's cool. move on to more Fallout stuff. Okay. The direction, the visuals of this show, the production design, man, did they fucking nail it, in my opinion. Yes. It mm. feels like they just took the video games and they were like, make this. Mm. Yep. Um, curious to hear what you guys think. Overall, I think that the visual effects were really great, except one moment. One yeah. moment I was a bit like, eh. It was, I can't remember which one it was, but I just remember visually, like, it just oh, was I Mine know was that. when the gulper fingers were kind of Oh, uh, yeah, that was bad. Like, I love the Yaogwe. I, I thought the Yagway was great. That's, so that's funny. We're on opposite sides because I thought that the gulper was good. You didn't the, like the Yagway. At, was at like, times looked like a guy fun. in a suit because he was like upright the whole time, and I was no, like, I that, think that, the Yagway, the, the, the bear, bear the, 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 the bear, first couple yeah. episodes. He was big though, was big. and yeah. I was I was I also don't I did not like that night at all. So I was kind of night Titus, right? Oh, I didn't yeah, like the night, so I was happy that he was getting after. That whole scene was hilarious, by the way. Like I felt like the brotherhood tone was so heavy, and then to hear him be like fuck, 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 yeah. fuck, and running yeah. away, I was just like, this yeah. is so it's so Fallout humor though, you know. So yeah. it was I like that. I was we were talking in the office last week about like they went the direction of making the knights. It, it seems like a very practical suit. Right, like they literally climbed it, it and out. it was. I believe it all they looks had like a they're walking around on set. set. Yeah, yeah. And and like for good and bad, I think they look great, and it makes more sense. It's probably easier to act with off of. You know, I think it's also it's like they're clearly not like three thousand pounds of hardened steel. They're mm -hmm. made of some kind of foam or, or whatever. And occasionally it, they look a little lightweight. Yeah, sure. yeah. Right. but whatever. I forgive that. I I don't mind a man. Well, well, like, a little yeah. bit too is that the suit is powered right, and so it looks lightweight because theoretically you can kind of yes. move in it. Yeah, like, there's it's not really. And it was yes. so cute when Max was like getting acclimated with it, and he was just like, I feel like that's how we would be. We'd be like, yeah. Dude, you're <laughs> I'm gonna so chuck the shit in yeah. the ocean. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. like, like knocks over a bar. Yeah, yeah, it was super cute. Um, I, I want to add another category in here okay. too. You know, I, uh, speaking of the power armor, one of the things that like brought me a lot of nostalgia was the sound of the oh, power yes. armor yes. when it was running around. I was like, ooh, that's so good. Between the 
score, which I thought was really good, done by Raman Juani. I don't same guy from Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. oh, and wow. from Westworld. Uh, and what then, I love about that, though, is that they actually use songs from the radio in game yes. from many of the different games. And, and I don't think we ever confirmed this, but I was watching it with a buddy. It felt like um, there were some songs from the games in the middle of the episodes, but there were also some songs that were not in the games in the episodes. But it did feel like the first song and the last song were kind of like iconic songs from the games i wasn't i didn't go back and like do the research to make sure that was true but that's sort of how yeah, it felt the soundtrack was phenomenal so good. Um, the pit boy sound effects that's... like the, the buzzing and like the, the prickling kind of sounds for it all like i loved that that for me was straight away and the clacking of like the old school um computers again taken straight from the game so aesthetically they did such a good job of bringing things from the game to life to make it look sound and feel like the game which yeah. I loved. down to like things they didn't need to do they could have gotten televisions from the 1950s and 60s, but they didn't. They went ahead and designed the television set after what's in the video game to make it look authentic. Yeah. You know, they did all those kinds of Mr. like Handy? small details. Oh, I mean, yeah. hey, speaking of, we didn't talk about Matt Berry, um, his little cameo <laughs> in the bar or whatever yeah. in that one episode. At was the so party. Fun. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So uh, I, I just thought it, it felt so fallout. So I, um, just talking about the world building and just like how they nailed it right from the get go. That opening scene is like probably one of the best opening scenes I've seen in a show in so long. Like first introducing the world so well, right? Like there you see the TV and you see the home and they're like right outside of Los Angeles. And then like establishing like Coop's like tragic backstories talking about alimony. And he's like, hey, this isn't like the time to be doing the thumbs up thing. And then, the switch from like this fun little awkward party we know like something's happening but then the switch to animal from human to animalistic like in a second he like punches the guy to get oh, into the that, shelter that scene, totally the people tripping all yeah. over like lawn chairs and stuff like that and then ugh, Coop and his daughter just like riding off in the distance and you just see, like I'm getting chills thinking you about it again. Happened. You just don't know. And it, you yeah. know, it's been rare. I thought that his daughter when she was staring at the bomb for the first time with that fear in her eye, like some of the better child acting I've seen. Really, I agree. She nailed that like literally 15 seconds where I was sitting there and I was like, I wonder if the like director talked to her parents for like, can we actually show her something fucking scary know, or something like right? that? She was yeah. so good. Yeah. And you, you, the dad, Zach is like, yeah, they probably didn't do that. No, yeah. it's called uh, acting. acting. John. Oh, yeah. um, hey, we're, 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 we're the class of Meisner over here, Zach. All right. We're going to scare the shit out of people. If we have to. During marathon, man. It's called <laughs> acting, my boy. Oh my can I just say one thing about the fact, I, sorry, I, every single fallout, Sorry for more Easter eggs, but every single Fallout game starts with the same message. Mm -hmm. And it's Ron Perlman, the actor, war. saying, yeah, war. War never changes. And so I thought it was interesting that this show didn't start I with that. But yeah. it hmm. ended with that line said by um, Walton Goggins' wife, Barb, mm -hmm. in, the, in the show. But what I did like is that the other synonymous thing with Fallout is, is that the logo is... Uh, this guy put with the thumbs up and everyone thought that he's like yay and it's not the case mm -hmm. like the whole um big thing behind that was if you put your thumb out and the atomic bomb is bigger than your thumb you got to book it uh actually no you'll be no, 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 if it's smaller yeah. than your thumb you run if it's, if it's bigger, bigger then it's too late done. Yeah. which is um, so like Frightening. heavy yeah. So, yeah yeah because it's such a happy little dude with his eye that's why his eyes shut um i love that they brought that up in the first part of the game because it's a really organic way to pay such homage uh, to the what is so important and intrinsic to to fallout so the 100%. fact that like both of those big things that are necessary bookended the show yep. really happy I, I do think that visuals and how they brought the video game to life is the best part about this show also yeah. can we talk about barb like i did not see that coming like i right. was like there's this happy cute couple and then like she's in that like ceo war room meeting or whatever and it's just like so saccharine and sweet but like saying stuff and i'm like because at that point you've listening. forgotten about the like alimony line yeah. You know? yeah, yeah yeah and i was just like this like i i thought that actor did a really great job yeah. because i just did not see that coming at all do you want and, to have another fun fact about that particular scene oh yeah please. okay so when they were going like the round robin discussions of what do you think we should do with the vault and they were firing off ideas each single one of those ideas actually actually exist in the game. Oh, yeah. So the experiments that happened, we saw that one already. Um, the vault where it's like, we should separate the children from the adults and see which one survives. So There's a, I think it was like one of the fallout I vaults. Uh, there was 
no one over 15. So it's like yeah. all of those things that they're just spurring actually exist in the game. So I do think that the Vault Tech stuff is my favorite of like all Fallout universe stuff. And you mentioned the opening sequence. I just kind of want to bring up like Fallout 4. Fallout 4, the Vault 111, their whole kind of conceit was some of this cryo freeze yes. stuff that we deal with in this show. And your main protagonist, uh, his uh, okay. partner partner get yeah, him or her his their partner gets murdered their baby gets stolen and like grows up to be a bag anyway, spoilers yeah. um i like that this show kind of paralleled the opening of fallout 4 the opening of fallout 4 is like vault tech guys at your door he's like hey do you want to buy a vault blah, blah, blah. and then the bombs drop and you have to like flee and then you go underground i liked how this show did something similar which is like you know, obviously that's not the end result that uh, Cooper gets, but, you know, just like being able to repeat that. And I thought they did a better job. In Which this. is wild. Yeah. Yeah, I but, totally agree. Guys, guys, Bob is the one who's saying we should drop the bombs. Yes. But the daughter is with I know. Her. I actually wanted to. Not her. No. His daughter's at with, the party. Yeah, with, with While he's doing Cooper. the couch. Oh, oh, yes. So what I, yes. I, oh, do you I think would, it's because it was a weekend? Hold on, I. But if well, you, oh, speaking of, so mods, mods yeah. dropping all of these lore facts. I, I, I have a lore fact. We, that's I want to get into that. For that's sure. actually just a straight okay. up loop uh, or a plot hole. Uh, technically, um, actually, the bombs would have dropped in Los Angeles at like six forty-five in the morning. So to have a birthday party when the oh, bombs are dropping was a little bit like, who the fuck got up oh. this early where, for that where, party? When, okay. when is the time established? In other fall games. Oh, oh, just based yeah. on the games. But yeah. of course, we're, we're saying we're not totally following the game. But it is yeah. canon, this show, is supposed, mm. so, yeah. supposedly. So it should have been honoring that. It's yeah. okay. And if I it's know, a better scene. By the way, I love it. Like, oh, excuse me. I'll let me clarify right here for a second. That was great. Um, no, but I, I do want, what we were, we were wanting to talk about what happened to the daughter. Like, I I think she started to become a ghoul, and he probably yep. had to do something really bad. You ha you saw him kill his friend, Dave, Dave Dale? His friend yeah, that was like starting to turn. So, but but he says yeah. he says at the very end, right? We can talk a little bit about the very end. And I like that so much of the ghoul and Barb and is is part of the dangle for the season two, right? We think maybe that's where their Kyle McLaughlin is going to go to where Barb is, whatever. Um, that like we don't know what happened after those bombs drop and no. him and the daughter yep. ride off on a horse. And How did he get separated from the daughter? Why is she with the mom now? Or At the well, end too, he said, um, where's my fucking family, yeah, right? Yeah. So his whole the daughter has could been be established. Alive. He's so, been, his only stake in this is to know where his family is. And I'm guessing not wife after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, the daughter could be alive, but I initially thought, but then when he said, where's my family? Then I was like, oh, maybe yes. maybe he got her into a vault at the last second. I want to know. Yeah, maybe, oh, yeah. maybe she's with know. mom, maybe she's just with neither parent. And I, I hope she's just, some kind of... Maybe in a vault. Uh, yeah. I was just mentioning Fallout 4, baby gets taken away from you, becomes... Uh, what is the faction in Fallout 4 where the guy becomes like the... He becomes like a cult figure. Your son, and you meet your son at an old age. Could she... Be a, a an antagonist in a future season, right? Mm. Like a fire mother type of yeah. Character oh my god! Like so let's talk. Let's talk it. about the end of this. Okay. Um, let's talk about the end of this show. Let's talk about season two. We do know that, that I don't think Amazon has announced officially a season two, but they we do know yet. from like tax credit, you know, yeah, kind exactly. of stuff in the yeah. trades that it sounds like they're going to be doing a season two. So let's just and obviously how the show ends. Let's okay. quickly talk about how the show ends and kind of. Um, what we can expect from season two. I will be right back. Get out of here. Okay, so, oh, should okay we, should first of all, you drop I'm all so that. Sorry. I, I, like, all, all of a sudden started to feel very sick, so I would be oh, right back. Oh, no. Continue. Oh, I got you. Okay, first of all, okay. Norm, our younger brother, Norm here, who's been locked into Vault 31, and his only options are to starve to death or to freeze in one of the cryo chambers. What do you think's happening? Oh, I didn't even, wasn't even thinking about that. Gosh. Yeah. I think it's, a, though it is oh. interesting that they don't see him make that choice. No. Yeah, so, so they don't know. I think we're led to believe he will probably jump into a pod, but also maybe he just, he just steps on the. the yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I was like, when I was watching, um, I was like, why does he just kick this thing? Why kick the Roomba? And by the way, in the uh, closed captioning, it said brain on a Roomba. Yes, I love and that. I was yeah. dying. But yeah, I was kind of like, why is he like listening to this dude? I'd be like, listen, brain. 
I'm gonna step on you unless you open this door like right now. Please you know come I mean? closer. I yeah, yeah, yeah. With a syringe, please. Don't yeah. mark him. But I love Norm, by the way. Like yeah. I, yeah. I felt like he had a really that good art. That actor had to do so much with like very little dialogue, mostly just like close-up face shots where he's like slowly realizing or just giving skeptical faces. Also, this may be the most obvious thing, but I think I didn't realize till I had finished the entire series and was thinking back on it. Betty, the woman who becomes overseer of all 33, mm -hmm. was the secretary yes. of Bard in the past. Yes, John's back, everybody. Yes. That they just yeah. slip out. Cooper's like, thanks, Betty, or whatever. Yeah. And we're like, oh, and I didn't even it didn't even jog because they oh, throw out so, so many good. like Barb and Betty's and, and whatever old school names that it's like, oh, that's that was so her. good. Yes. So good. Now I want to know who um the doppelganger is, because the doppelganger um of yes. Mod that's how I just refer oh, to yeah. <laughs> is Mod's doppelganger, um, is was also unfrozen, you know? Yeah. But and so we'll probably see her in the past yeah. at some point, maybe in like old Vault Tech. Yeah. Era. She's right yeah. here, maybe. I do yeah. have a few more questions if we peel back what's going on. So we've got three vaults that are interconnected, 31, 32, 33. We discovered that 32 has been long abandoned and that 32 found out the truth many years ago, blood spattered with messaging on the walls. Very event horizon. All the crops are done. Yeah, yeah I felt mm -hmm. that. Um, and then that's where the raiders kind of came in. But the door was opened from the outside with mum's um, rose mm -hmm. as Pip boy uh, so then if 31 has no one in it except they're all frozen and they're all sort of management and 33 has been run by people who were th frozen from 31 how did they cover the 32 mishap for so long why did they leave that buried so I thought so it was kind of is a there a tunnel from 31 to 33 yes, or well, is they're it all straight connected. through they're like in like a oh that's right. right there's a poster with the triangle yeah. yeah. well and it's also interesting so we think that just Something happened in 32. They realized the management thing to such a degree that they all went nuts and either killed each other or killed themselves. Pretty extreme. But also, Moldover, her plan is, I have a pit boy because the bomb blew up and, and Lucy's mom became a ghoul, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just using the pit boy to get into 33 and just bringing my raiders 32. with machine guns in there. No, oh, into 33. Somehow she knows 32 has been abandoned. We'll Man, and they had to read so many of, like files yes. that were like, in every three years we do this swap and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, Seems yeah, like yeah. a much more complicated way than just open up the vault for 33 and start yeah, shooting. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but then we don't have a oh, mystery well, for the show. Mystery, yeah, show. John true. and I were also talking. So like I watched Westworld and love had it. a little bit of a love-hate relationship with that also show. Also true. Yeah. yeah. Started yeah. Really good. So good yes. in the beginning. Then like- Oh God, if Fallout so, 2 starts with like a shitty, or Fallout season two starts with like a weird beach walk and they're like- Yes, or or like um, <laughs> peel so back tired. somebody's scalp and there's a maze ripping <laughs> yeah. through your scalp or something like that. <laughs> Please. And that show, it was such like a mystery box kind of thing that quickly just like you realize like, oh, there's not really a payoff to the mystery and like it quickly declined. I appreciate though there were some elements of that and certainly like they there were some overarching mysteries that were slowly revealed the whole nature of the vault tech and what happened to Shady Sands yada 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 but like I appreciate that the show wasn't built only on that. There was other mm, story yes, and totally. character and interesting things so that like if you did kind of think too hard about the mysteries and you're like oh wait it doesn't matter. It doesn't That's take fun. away from the show. I actually much. will say there's a couple of episodes where they were just stretching it out a little bit too long. And I kind of wish it was a little bit more of like a domino effect where we learnt things a little bit earlier, which led to the next thing, which led to the next thing, instead of being held off for a long time and then an inundation of information. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Can I soapbox yeah. real fast? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, I, I, I'm right there with you. You know, I think that like J.J. Abrams, I'm a little bit of an apologist for... Um, and I, you know, it had nothing to do with this show. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm where getting are you there. Going? Okay. I'm getting there. Alias is one of the Mod's best shows. Um, <laughs> Alias, Alias is one of the best shows. So. I, I mean, like, I love Lost. Um, even though I know that he I've wasn't super him. involved in that. Um, my point is this like mystery box thing. And all, everyone online is like, fuck the mystery box. And JJ Abrams is so stupid for this mystery box. I think it's like, made writers averse to putting mysteries in their shows. And I love the like week to week trying to, I mean, we work in the rock stars, right? The like week to week trying to figure out, oh, what does that line mean? Or where is this yeah. headed or blah, blah, blah. So I'm really thankful that they put in all these kind of mysteries. It made me, we were talking about, we didn't really get into it. The binge drop that they did really kind of was a bummer for me. I wish that they had done it 
week know. to week speculation. You know so we what? could be sitting here. The first episode just came out, and we we're like, "Holy shit! Why does she know her mom?" And ba 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 ba. Like yeah. it would be so much more fun. I it also been fun, yeah. think that uh, it, I'm in two minds of it. Sometimes I love a good binge. I'm like, just let me watch. You know, I think that there are some programs that really do benefit from it. And from a point of view of like wanting to maintain viewers for as long as possible if it, everyone's like you've got to get prime just for fallout alone instead of being like cool i binged it in five days and i'm out it's like that's yeah. eight weeks yeah. that's two I mean, they, they do it with the boys right or invincible yeah. they well, can out. you imagine they had the they had invincible that was releasing weekly they have fallout if that was releasing weekly that kind of leads you into the boys and that's honestly i don't know if this is true or not this is what i was thinking i think that like i think people were nervous about fallout because um frankly like Rings of Power, they built so much hype around, and like I still think Rings of Power could come back. You know, like, million dollars an episode. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm holding that hope. I know Mod definitely is. Mod's like even show harder. Seemed like, yeah, it could have been that expensive. It seemed expensive, but what I think was that like they were. I think like is this good or not? You know what I mean? Like they weren't 100 percent mm. sure, and then I think when they started to hear the early reception, they were like, shoot, let's just drop this early. You know what I mean? Because it was that good. But I think they were probably a little nervous. And so they were like, maybe we just drop it all and see if people are like, I, I have no idea. I'm not a marketing expert by any means. I, but I was like thinking maybe they were just like, hey, this is better than we thought. It's getting good reception. Let's just give it. Potentially, I, I also yeah. wonder if they were like, you know, you also, we, we might be in the minority here. There are a lot of people, anytime you have these discussions online that immediately comment, I don't want to have to wait a week. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with that too. They want and, it. And, yeah. and, and, and but that's good, right? Like that as a human is a good feeling. I don't want to. I don't want to wait for that thing because I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, but maybe I'm really maybe you, know, you have other things going on in your life, John. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. If all you have in your life is the first season of Fallout. You need yeah. it now. Well, yeah. then, but then think about it. If that's all you have in your life, it's one and done after a couple you might of days. Milk it for two months. That's, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. that's too funny. Can I ask a couple? Yeah, things? yeah. Um, where are you? Thumbs up, okie dokie, or wasted? Oh, no. Um, oh, for the full show. What What do you think? Like, how amped are you for season two? And where do you put this compared to The Last of Us as far as recent oh, video game no, adaptation TV shows? Oh. And if you want to throw in Twisted Metal, none of us saw Twisted Metal, but if you saw it, <laughs> yeah. throw in Twisted Metal, where do you rank this with those shows? Chat's please? loving it. Yeah. Chat loves it. Is oh, this for right. us or for chat? For uh, chat. YouTube, YouTube comments, comments, but okay, also okay. for us. Yeah. 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 Um, I like it better than The Last of Us. Ooh. I really, really like The Last of Us. So I yeah. feel like it's like, I say it like it better than The Last of Us, but it's only by a little bit. Um, I just, I'm, I like anime. I like campiness. I like over the topness. Yeah. This was like so over the top, had me laughing, but then still had these like super heavy moments. It had amazing one liners and it made me really think. Um, but I think we kind of talked about this at the beginning. Like it just had a levity that, my taste likes personally. I can see why people would like The Last of Us more. Um, I do think The Last of Us is heavier. I think that um, the episode with Bill, I forgot his um, yes. partner's yeah. name, but that has to be one of the like best like cinematic and, episodes, and, period. And we were saying like this show does never achieves the heights of that episode. I agree. Ever, but it's it, not aiming for it. You're right. Yeah. And for so it. just for Jackie personally, like I, I, I really liked Fallout. Bill and Frank. Frank. Bill and Bill Frank, Frank thank you. Yes. Love that episode. Um, I will say, you've got it's Neil Druckmann who did Last of Us. He uh -huh. he wrote and the Craig show. Mason, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So as like an ensemble, they they kind of wrote and, and they really stayed true to the the source material. I think what's interesting here is that it was a completely different story that You're we right. haven't seen. Two very different approaches. Game. I love but that. But the thing that they have in common is a big ass budget. And I think if you're <laughs> gonna delve with anything video game related, you need to put money behind it yes. because the story's already there, the fan base is already there, it's inbuilt, the IP's fantastic. If you can do justice with that script, put money behind it. Yes. Well, especially because the games have so much money put into them mm -hmm. that if right. you can't over, you know, go These over are 100, that. 100 then plus why, million dollar yeah, games. Then absolutely. why even uh, make it into a show, right? Yeah. For me, I think that this was better, uh, again, couching this by saying, we've all said it, loved The Last of Us show. Uh, I think I enjoyed this show more than The Last of Us because I had already played The Last of Us a few times through such a familiar story. And while I did love it, it wasn't like, it. you know, the emotional moment at the end of that 
game or, or, or show is like so hard hitting. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, when you watch it for like the fourth time, it's like, yep, that was what was going to happen. And I'm sad, but like, you know, whatever. So this being a new show, I think is what's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't like it more than the last of us video game. Cause, but yeah, yeah. that's a really good point. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, we were talking what? about what, what another video game that we should want to see adapted into a TV series. And That's you and right. I were saying Bioshock, Bioshock, but you think one and I think two. You Infinite's three. Three. Yep. I think hey, I, do them all. Fuck it. You know. Yeah. I think Bioshock Infinite two is like so pretty and so gorgeous. It's so different than you know the first couple of Bioshock movies. I think that would be really. But fun. like the magic abilities, it's, yeah. it's like what the witches. The, I mean, the witch is another great example. Yeah. Except they have lost the damn plot. Yeah. They didn't stick with the source material. And there's like a whole um, dang video you... game and book series. Yeah. And right book there, series. Yeah. Ready to go. That's the problem with adapting The Witcher soapbox again. Because, uh, like, who do you try to please? Do you try to please the book people? Good do you point. try to please you try the video game people? Henry you can't. Fucking Cavill. <laughs> you can't please anyone. They couldn't even do that. <laughs> Um, I see some people saying Mass Effect trilogy. We already talked about oh, Bioshock, but if I, had to, if I had to pick another one, I think it would be like Red Dead Redemption 2 or something I like that. Oh, yeah, so just take Walt Goggins. I right mean, in there. you know, shit uh, like that. Well, and speaking of Henry Cavill, I know it's a little different. He's making a Warhammer show sure. for That's Amazon, right? right? That's right. Um, yeah. It's far too much armor for that man, but I'll watch it anyway. <laughs> he can do no wrong. I love him. Um, maybe Final Fantasy VII. I'm loving Rebirth okay. right now. I like love that game, and I have been so busy I can't play it. Like I'm like I think through the first act, I, but I I'd feel love that to see so some much. JRPG come to life. It, I don't know if it ever. I don't think people realize in this job we consume so much media that to in, consume the media that we like truly, truly, truly love for fun. We have to like <laughs> we have to like clear our schedules and like light a candle and take a bath or something. Uh, <laughs> I, I've got an idea. Just came. To me. So it's like a small town murder mystery kind of scope with like, you know, quite a strong drama, but it's set in Stardew Valley. Oh my god. I want to see those characters brought to life. That so Stardew That'd Valley. That'd be so good, right? I'll fucking ride it. I don't care. Excuse me. I'm getting hyped into it. What, what is really interesting about everything we're talking about is that video games create such beautiful, wonderful worlds. And it's like taking that world and not trying to change it too much, like honoring it, respecting the fandom. And I think that's like really just the key to success. Also working closely with the creator, Todd Howard was like heavily involved with this right. project. And Neil Druckmann on the last of a side. Absolutely. Every time I hear about an adaptation shitting the bed, it's, I literally read something about them not working closely with the creators. I uh, like with Halo, I, sorry, but Halo, Halo. is a great example. I, uh, look, see, I like the visual, they have got money behind it, but they pissed off the entire Halo community by going way off script. They, they just thought, hey, you know what? You've got how many video games? You've got lore, you've got books. We're just gonna do our thing with yeah. Master Chief and we're gonna yeah. take off his helmet. Exactly. And I will say, because there's gonna be people in the comments, we know that Todd Howard did not create Fallout, but he is truly like the godfather of Fallout at this yeah. point after doing He's it. And one of the godfathers of the video game industry, Truly. frankly. So yeah. God, you, hey, I would take a fucking Skyrim movie or oh show. Oh my god! Absolutely. Why not? That would be such be so a big project to tackle. Though I, I like that. I would be scared to if, do that. If if Prime did uh, Skyrim instead of doing Rings of Power. Oh, that's it. That's where what we would we be today? Anyways, Ooh. thank you guys Don't so much. Don't leave us on that now. Okay, <laughs> well, we'll no, go on home, that, think everybody. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching The Break Room today. We'll be back for season two. Obviously, that'll probably be in a few 2027? years. But stick yeah, around. We're talking about X-Men 97. We've got the Acolyte coming out soon. We've got a bunch of crazy stuff. The boys, uh, stick around. We will be here for all of your nerdy fandom needs. Thank Thumbs you so up, much everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.